The definition of one hit wonder is a group or singer that has only one hit record. Typically after one of their earliest songs blows up, one hit wonders find it hard to follow up with a record impressive or catchy enough to maintain that hype, which typically results in them falling off right after. So today we're going to be looking into five one hit wonders and seeing what they're up to nowadays. Starting off with CJ and his hit song Whoopty. Real quick, I just want to explain my Fucking criteria for song. these one hit wonders, which is an artist that has a hit, a song that at least went platinum, and then doesn't have a song come even even close to that like not even having a song go gold also if you're new here my name is Manny balls i'm going to be posting a video every sunday at 12 p.m cst so if you like music make sure to stick around and subscribe now let's get into it CJ is a rapper who many know for his song Whoopty and literally nothing else. People literally <laughs> refer to him as CJ parentheses Whoopty because they don't know any other songs from him. So CJ began his rap career as a kid and started posting music to YouTube and SoundCloud when he was just 14 years old. He released a handful of songs over the years and saw a little buzz after he likely paid for a 6 9 feature for the song Pop in 2018. So that's what I'm saying. That's 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 my story. People think that the Whoopty song was my first song that I ever made and I just blew up. Nah, y'all gotta do y'all research. I gotta do y'all homework. I I've been doing this for years, 10 years plus. I just happened to create Whoopi. It happened crazy. to be the song that blew up. But other than that little bit of information, he was relatively unknown and hardly had much music out. Until, of course, he released his drill song Whoopty in July of 2020. This song was a smash hit, blowing up on YouTube and TikTok. It featured a catchy hook and a sample that had already been used by drill legend Pop Smoke, King Von, FBG Duck, and more. The YouTube video has over 450 million views, God, and the song damn. itself went two times platinum. Shortly after the virality of this song, he signed a deal with Warner Records. He followed up Whoopty with the song Bop, which did all right, and then released his album Loyalty Over Royalty, which did not perform well at all when compared Ugh. to his previous hit. With single after single, CJ was struggling to replicate the success he saw with Whoopty until he eventually parted ways with Warner Records. We had our differences with the label, and um, you know, we decided to part ways. It's crazy. They're they're always. This is what every fucking rapper says. No, you decided to part ways. No, nigga, you fucking flopped. They want their money back, or you, they they will never admit that. Leave it at that. But I do want to clarify a lot of people who aren't doing so hot like to rephrase being dropped by their label as parting ways or having disagreements. <laughs> I'm Maddie Balls now. Just give me a. I don't even need black Matty balls it's very possible that cj was dropped hello yasin even claimed that he was dropped but i'm not sure how accurate that is regardless things started going dropped. downhill for cj for a couple of reasons one of the main reasons that he couldn't replicate his success was because he just jumped on a trend a reddit user explained fairly well why whoopty blew up like it did and why he couldn't create a hit like it again they said whoopty came out 2020 months after pop smoke died keeping it a grand after pop smoke died people were desperate for another drill star that's why that shit Plus, Dusty Locaine got millions of views quick, and that was their that first song. After Pop Smoke died, one of the most popular drill artists, there was a huge longing for more hard hitting, aggressive drill songs, and people began trying to fill that void. Whoopty was literally made off a Pop Smoke type beat, so it's pretty obvious what market CJ was trying to dip his toes into. It was actually his first drill song. There was also another controversy going on with CJ where many people were accusing him of fake being a fake blood. I'm not gonna go too much into detail about this, and but that nigga got exposed for that shit. That Nigga went full. Was he Dominican? He, he's nigga Spanish with it now. A lot of people lost respect for CJ because of this. Because, like I said, I ain't want to get pigeonholed. I, I caught myself getting too deep into that drill shit. And I'm like, yo, I gotta remember, I'm not a drill artist, bro. Like, I'm over here beefing with drill rappers and this and that yeah, about, about, <laughs> about the drill music. So I'm like, yo, bro, like, what am I doing? Like, I'm sitting here, like, pigeonholing myself into this little circle. Meanwhile, there's a whole world and a whole other genre out there you know what i'm saying that i could be working with so that's why i just started just doing my own thing on the comments of that interview with dj academics people were saying things like he basically realized he isn't about that life and he regrets riding the drill wave and problem with rap is you can't be fake street once it's exposed it's over he's basically the spanish slim jesus since all of this went down oh, cj crazy. hasn't released any Where music of his jesus? own since january of 2023 he hasn't posted on instagram since then other than a few ig stories here and there so for now it looks like cj has gone mia he does have a very young career though so the chance of him making a comeback is definitely possible but with how much people just dislike him or straight up forgot about him it's pretty unlikely. What you know about rolling down in the deep? Matt. Oh, I...
every time I hear this song, I think about the most depressing thing that's ever happened in my life. I truly, like, I don't, like, I hate things, but this is, like, top five things that I hate. This wolf is an artist whose name you probably don't even recognize, but I promise you've heard his viral TikTok song, Astronaut in the Ocean. So I think that sums this up pretty well. Master Wolf is an Australian artist who has actually been putting out music Australian? for a long time. He started playing instruments as a kid and writing songs when he was 13. However, it wasn't until 2018, when he was 27 years old, that he signed to Teamwork yeah. Records and released his first official single, Speed Racer. He quickly followed that up with the song, Astronaut in the Ocean, in 2019, but it didn't blow up back then. It took a handful more singles for Masked Wolf to get signed to the US-based record label Elektra Records in 2021. After signing to Elektra, he re-released Astronaut in the Ocean and it went super viral. It hit number six on the Billboard Hot 100 and eventually went two times platinum. TikTok was a huge aid in this song's virality, along with pretty much every other social media platform. You may have heard these lyrics uh, repeated again and again and again and again and again. Really background music at this point. Like, I I gouge my ears, just shove them up my ass at that point. And then again and again. I just keep hearing bullshit. In various places across the internet, it is a track that seemingly you can't really escape from right now. However, one of the main reasons the song was so viral was because, in part, this song was a pretty big meme. A lot of people did like it, don't get me wrong, but there was definitely some memeiness to it in the general music community. I mean, one of the top comments on the song's music video is, I heard this song in my dreams for about 10 minutes straight, but then I remembered I had YouTube shorts playing in the background and forgot to turn off my phone. <laughs> I think that emphasizes where this song gets its infamy. Hive Mind even had it in their worst songs of all time bracket, so that's got to say something. Thank song God. Where he says like, I rock with G-O-D. Don't rock with T-H-O-T. -T. No. Yeah, he said he loves God and he doesn't like thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if those are the exact words, but he definitely spells out G-O-D and then right away it spells out T-H-O-T. -T. <laughs> it's like usually God and the devil are raging inside right. you, but then for him it's God and thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mask Wolf is awesome. And this song, honestly, this song's only grown on me over time. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> So the fact that so many people hated this song or at least didn't lit. take it seriously really didn't help Masked Wolf's future career. He followed up Astronaut in the Ocean with a few singles and then his debut studio album, Astronomical. But those songs did not perform nearly as well as his hit single did. Like I've emphasized throughout this video, it's hard to live up to that success no matter who you are, but it's especially difficult when you're relatively unknown. Masked Wolf said that he was a big rap fan growing up and was really inspired by artists like Kendrick, so he wanted to be like them. But he said Astronaut in the Ocean wasn't received as seriously as a song from someone like Kendrick would be, so his label wanted him oh, to do shit. something different. He said his label had him going different routes, trying to recreate a hit, and it wasn't working out. So him and his label parted ways, and he went independent. You're independent. Literally, that was the downfall. I don't know why they trying to make him go ways to make a hit instead of just building the foundation. They just looking for hits to get the money. He definitely signed that label with a big payout that he cannot get back. And now, right? Did you? Does that mean? that you fulfilled your contract with Ele uh, with Electra, or did you Hell part nah. ways amicably? We mutually part, mutually part. Okay, got yeah, you. Yeah, it was on both sides. However people want to take that or whatever that means, <laughs> go for it. But at the end of the day, I'm not bound to them. They are not bound to me. The way he said it also makes it seem like it's possible he was dropped, but who knows. Regardless, Mass Wolf is now independent and trying to keep putting out music that is fulfilling I mean, to him. He, he seems views. fully aware of the situation he's in. He knows that Astronaut in the Ocean was a big TikTok song and that it's important that people know him rather than just the first few lines from the song that blew up on TikTok. And just like CJ, his career is young, so who knows where it could go from here. Generational song. He would forever be the GOAT. Trinidad James will ever be a stamp in the music for that. Trinidad for this James one is a song. rapper that's best known for his song All Gold Everything from 2012. But by 2018, he had admitted on the No Jumper podcast that he had fallen off. Things happened pretty quick for Trinidad James. He began looking at beats and writing lyrics after high school. And in 2011, he started rapping. He got invited to a studio session, but didn't like the quality of the studio he was in. So he invested in a premium studio session in which he recorded his song All Gold Everything. He released it as his debut single in 2012 and it went viral. He also released his debut album, Don't Be Safe, but that paled in comparison to the success of All Gold Everything. The single peaked at 36 on the Billboard Hot 100, and like many of the other songs on this list, it went
went platinum. Ooh. And when an artist has a hit song like this, the labels come calling. He quickly signed to Def Jam for a $2 million deal. In early 2013, the song got a remix with T.I., Young Jeezy, and 2 Chainz. Also, fun fact that you probably already know or maybe didn't notice, but Bruno Mars interpolated All Gold Everything on his song Uptown Funk. Trinidad's career was going very well. He started collaborating with other artists like Logic, Gucci Mane, Wale, and most notably ASAP Ferg on the work remix alongside French Montana, ASAP Rocky, and Schoolboy Q. And I guess Damn, I broke my rule here a little bit because then? the song also went platinum, and he did have another one go gold. Also in 2013, Trinidad James made the XXL Freshman Class, which was a pretty big deal at the time, although his cipher was a bit underwhelming. In 2014, he released his second project, 10 Piece Mild, with features from artists like Sci High, Travis Scott, Danny Brown, Rich Homie Kwan, Gucci Mane, Childish Gambino, and more. Despite the massive feature lineup, this album didn't perform super well the hell and received Danny mixed Brown? reviews. And afterwards, Trinidad didn't release music for a while. Around this time, he was dropped by his label, which he announced in a tweet by saying, I should tell y'all, I got dropped from my label. My album is now free. If you hear your beat or verse on it, I hope you want dap because I got no money. Which I gotta say, I respect because like we've seen other people possibly do on this list, a lot of people tend to lie when they're dropped by their label. He was also in some hot water for some comments he made about New York and had a little bit of a beef with Charlemagne, but that didn't seem to be the main reason his career began to decline. Some people thought it was, but he didn't fully agree with that take either. Right. So when I went back and looked at that New York situation, I look at that as like, oh damn, y'all got to just see an angry black man talking this shit. Mm. And um, you get to learn that if you allow social media to tell your narrative, like I talked about just to say that earlier, a second ago, or whatever, then you. But, but what's cool about Trinidad James' story is how he was able to turn that negative into a positive. He didn't stop releasing music, created his own label, Gold Gang Records, and also had a handful of industry connections that he was able to utilize. He continued releasing music with people like Offset, Lil Dicky, Young Thug, and many more. His music never got nearly as close to the he, success of All Gold. And again, all these features, the fuck? How much money does he even go get from a platinum? That's a million, right? That's a million units. How much money do you even get from that after the cut from the label because i know they take majority of them that shit everything but he and was know, able to use his skills and i know back then offset migos 2012 everybody wanted them so them features has to be a pretty penny to make other big moves in the industry for example he did some writing on bad baby's high bit which was a huge song. And he also featured in Childish Gambino's screenplay, Clapping for the Wrong Reasons. He also guest starred on an episode of Full Size Run, a sneaker podcast on Complex, and he eventually began working with them regularly. Um, it just kind of popped up, bro. Like I did this show as a guest. And then my accountant was like, hey bro, maybe you should go up there and do the show. And I was like, I don't need that money mm. or oh, whatever you know what I'm saying I was thinking about the money I wasn't thinking like how I need to think which is like business it seemed to work out well since Trinidad was a pretty big fashion guy he's also just been posting a ton of content on YouTube outside of music videos so it really does seem like he's still having fun and keeping himself busy and his latest music is actually pretty good he's been tapped in with the music industry and really just seems like a cool guy having fun with his music this nigga. Silent Toe is probably the best example of a one-hit wonder, because after creating the viral hit song and dance with Watch Me, he fell off the map, and later ended up in jail for murder. So Silent Toe began his career in 8th grade, working with small producers making music and posting it online. Eventually, when he was a junior in high school, he found a guy named Bolo the Producer and made a song that he knew would be a hit. He started getting in contact with promotion companies and eventually signed with Capitol Records as they believed in the hit potential of this song. Capitol Records wanted to try a new campaign leveraging the popularity of songs that encouraged the listeners to do a Golly, dance, which was, he was really- He was potentially a industry plan, that's what it sounded like. I'm so glad I never participated in any of these fuck ass dances. Really popular bro. at the time. Then they released the song Watch Me with Nene. After being released on January 6th of 2015. Actually, I'm not, I'm not lying. But she'll never find it. I'm just telling you that right now. Teen, as I'm sure you all know, this song and dance became the biggest thing in the world. Watch Me went six times platinum and has about 2 billion views on YouTube. And if you weren't there at the time, everyone was doing this dance. Even all white dudes on the news were doing it. Watch Me Whip. That nigga whip. twerking. Watch me, nana. All right. Watch Me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. See? 
feels very awkward, doesn't it? The song remained in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 for over six weeks, and for a brief period of time, Silent Hill was on top of the world. But unfortunately, it is extremely hard to live up to what Silent Hill did. Watch Me wasn't popular because he was necessarily a good artist or because it was a good song, but because it was a fun song accompanied with a fun dance, which is nearly impossible to replicate. So Silent Hill's career began to decline. In 2018, he followed up with his debut album, Fresh Out of High School, in which most songs didn't even crack 100,000 plays on Spotify. Damn. Understandably, Silent Hill had been dealing with some mental health issues during this time. He grew up in Stone Mountain, Georgia, a small town with a big drug problem. He even claimed that he was born with a bunch of drugs in his system. I was born with weed, coke, heroin, pills, all type of drugs in my system. I saw family members talking to the wall. I watched family members fight. I watched family members try to kill each other. Nobody should have to watch that. Combine all that trauma with knowing that you can never live up to the viral hit song you made, knowing that your 15 minutes of fame are over, and it makes sense why he began to spiral downward. He was actually dropped by Capitol Records God before his damn. debut album even released. Once they had finished milking as much money as they could from Watch Me with merch, tours, concerts, and everything in between. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I was 17, but I'm 20 now, and you know, the deal I had, I got it terminated. I got a release. You kind of sound like Dave um, Lowe. I got away from that situation. I'm working on me a new situation right now. And yeah. Well, he may have acted like everything was cool on the outside. On the inside, it wasn't. He talked about his mental health issues in 2019 on the advice of his publicist, Chanel Hudson. She said that she noticed a decline in his mental health when he started missing important TV appearances and attributed it to how often he was traveling around the world and performing. Apparently, he even tried taking his own life after the pandemic hit, which was followed by an even further spiral downward. He was put in jail twice in California for domestic violence and gun charges and was later arrested for speeding, going over 140 miles per hour. Then, Silento hit the lowest of lows when yep. he caught a murder charge. In 2021, Silento was indicted for malice murder, I don't know why I'm smiling about that, but I, bro, this is, I was waiting for him to mention that because I was going to say it, bro. When I seen this, I'm like, damn, that fame really get to these niggas and they be doing the craziest shit when they got no more fame. He murdered, aggravated assault, and the possession of a firearm while committing a felony. He was accused of killing his cousin, Frederick Rooks. There is very little info on this case, and I don't think he's been sentenced yet, but in 2021, he did release an album called Bars Behind Bars, in which most songs didn't even crack 10,000 plays on Spotify. Other than a leaked jail photo, there is no oh information surrounding- gosh. He looked like a stud. Actually, in both pictures, he looked, ugh. <laughs> Yo, that Running is Silent scary. Way. Free take a. About lately, but I think it's safe to assume he's awaiting trial. Please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about this and there's more information. I just threw these guys on the list because I thought it was funny, but I'm sure some of you have wondered at one point or another, what happened to the guys who made the What Does the Fox Say song? So let's check it out. Also, I'm probably not going to pronounce- I never understood the hype around this. Like, this is another song that truly pissed me off every time I heard any of their it. names correctly, so forgive me in advance. Ilvis is a duo composed of two Norwegian brothers, Bagard and Bard Erheim. They were always very into music, playing multiple instruments and even being in their school's choir. Under the name Ilvis, they started doing variety shows, radio shows, and a bunch of other things after high school, displaying their range of talent. After doing a few variety shows, in 2010 they did another that sold out, and they also launched a comedy talk show. After their talk show was renewed for a second season, they created a production company and continued working on their comedy talk show. And that's how their famous song, The Fox, came to be. Songs like The Fox and Stonehenge were made for the show or to promote the show as parody and or comedy songs along with the music videos. But they were also uploaded to YouTube and streaming services where they would eventually go viral. The Fox, or What Does The Fox Say in particular, was extremely successful, as I'm sure you have all heard it, and it has over 1 billion views on YouTube. It also peaked at number six on the US Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks. So you may be surprised to find out that the song hasn't even gone platinum, so I'm kind of breaking my rule here as it only went gold. However, I believe this song goes beyond plaques, as I think it was a generational joke song that everyone loved. They got invited onto the Ellen DeGeneres show, Jimmy Fallon, The Today Show, and much more. They even won a few awards for their music. But as I'm sure you may have noticed, music wasn't their sole focus, as these were two comedy I'm saying, songs. This, from this is a song that went viral by accident. It wasn't even meant to be taken serious their talk show so clearly yeah, they she, had it made you can really oh he, he did say it was thrown in for a joke but in reality you can't really say it was a one-hit wonder if their initial plan was even to 
make it into the that deep into the music industry did other avenues they continued releasing music and even put out an album that was a collection of all of their popular songs from youtube but none of their songs never got mind they they tried got nearly as much traction as the fox did on the bright side it didn't seem like ilvis really wanted to be huge superstar musicians in the first place as they had many other things they were doing and it seems like they're still pretty popular across the pond for example in 2018 they released a documentary series called stories from norway where they took big headline stories from norway and turned them into musical documentaries and much more recently they started creating content for vgtv which is norway's largest streaming service so it seems like the boys from ilvis are doing great anyways i just want to include them in this video because I thought it was funny and I was kind of curious what they were up to and I can't think of an outro for this one so bye subscribe peace out see ya uh, I don't got one either